Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Dollar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ay, yeah. Ay, yeah. Reality. Ooh, yeah. yeah. The life we live right now is all about the money. So, what you gonna do when you ain't got no money? The foreign cars and all the bitches they gonna Real, my good people, man. Uh, the cliche cannot die today. We're gonna put some extras on it because I have a very, 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 very special guest. Um, to those looking at him, the majority of y'all, he needs no introduction. But to those that are listening and not viewing, the legendary Kev Mack from Kev Mack Videos. Welcome to Facts and Fillers, the podcast. Thank you, man. How you doing? I'm blessed, man. I got to do it. I don't give a fuck. I'm blessed abundantly, man. I, um, I, I want to do this real quick so I can put my phone down. That's something coming through to you. Uh, you can take a uh, look at that real quick. Um, uh, this I feel like this moment is long overdue, and as he reviews his phone, I'm going to announce I feel like it's four years overdue. And it's going to be a different introduction than we've ever had because <clears throat> as I'm sitting here with the legendary, not only the homie, my brother in the sense of a black man and a homie in the sense of our plight and our journey in these streets, but he's also in the sense of a content creator. He's a mentor of mine so someone that i look up to and aspire to accomplish some of the things you did as far as the way you made your presence out of something out of nothing on the internet i kind of got a head start with the industry shit, but you know we really respect what you do out here but i think that i want to know if you've been on the journey that i've been on with kev mack as long as i've been on it see this is what i felt like what y'all don't know is the text i just sent him is a dm conversation from how long ago I think that was uh, a few years ago, right? Quite a few. Yeah. And it was a humble request of myself reaching out to the infamous Kev Mack, like, hey. Uh, four years ago. Four years ago, 2019. I'm like, you know, without having no personal connection, just being aware of his presence on the internet and what he was doing, I understood how I fit, I fit into the scheme and the things. I reached out to the homie like, I'm ready whenever you are. And his response was like, for sure, wooty woo. And then it's been until right now, that we've got a chance to be in each other's presence and actually have a conversation. However, just look how the initial seats would have been different. It would have been him interviewing me, but when we finally got to it, uh, I'm interviewing him. And I know in my heart, I've been thinking this was the part, reason why you never got to it. And I just want to know if this is true or if you're aware of this. When I first started doing this live shit, talking on the internet, this is one of the reasons why I stopped reading comments in real time and re reacting to them because I didn't know the brand Kev Mac videos. Mm -hmm. So when I first started doing this shit, talking my shit, people in the comments like, you need to look up Kev Mac, you know Kev Mac? And I'm like, Kev, I'm reading Kev Mumbling, Kev Mac video, Kev Mac, what's that, who Kev Mac? And whatever the comments was, it was like, oh, you know, gang video. Who? And my reaction, cocky, arrogant, I don't need to watch no gang bang videos to get the, 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 the. And then shortly thereafter, I became aware. And I'm like, hmm. And I think that's probably when I reached out to you humbly and presented myself as wanting to be a part of your platform. And the fact it hasn't taken place all this time, I've been assuming you saw those comments I made very early on about Kev Mack like I wasn't giving a fuck. Now, I don't know if I'm telling on myself or were you aware of that? No, I wasn't aware of that. Bam. But, but what I wanted to ask you, somebody using your name, uh, I'm just say somebody, it could have been you, but nowadays trolls that use somebody of else's course. name. And the comment was, Kev Max platform ain't big enough for me. I'm looking for something bigger. Never, on oh, my mama, mama. And I'm gonna tell you why you know that's not true. I, I'm glad I got a witness in this building right now. Because I view you as an equal counterpart or the opposite of the homie Alex Alonzo. You guys kind of like represent the similar, I know I asked you this earlier. I was gonna ask you who started off. You said he was before you. Yeah. And so we pay homage to him as being the originator of this particular style and type of content for our region. But to a lot of people who wasn't sure who was first, you guys seem like the originators. There's no question who was first. Alex started on the internet while I was in prison. Okay. So when I come home and you look up some gang shit, it wasn't nobody but Alex Alonzo. Correct. And I want you to know, 
when Alex reached out to me, I didn't do his platform until like around that time. I was reached, like shortly before I reached out to you. So I probably did him in 19 or 18 too. Pause. Not did him. Did I hate they got me on that weak ass pause shit every time you say something that's slightly. Let me get out of that. Let's get more mature. Yeah. I, I did his platform in that same time frame. And when he reached out to me, his shit was street gangs. I'm going to tell you, I have been on a seven year hiatus from all this shit. I didn't know about none of y'all shit really, really, really. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about nothing. I knew about kind of Vlad. I didn't know about no no jump, no none of that shit. I was really tapped out listening to talk radio, 6.40 a.m. That's the only content I was taking mm -hmm. in for about seven years. So when I started hearing some shit, I wasn't aware of it. But when Alex reached out to me that wanted to do it, his shit was Street Gangs TV. And Alex could testify, me spot a low, banged out, whoever you want to call me, told Alex, I'm just now getting back to trying to establish, reestablish my public persona. And I don't want to be associated with a platform titled Street Gangs. I would love to do an interview with you. However, that's going against the image I'm trying to establish at this point. Ironically, without him having to cap me down, he was saying, damn, it's crazy because he, he got at me like in October or something. He's like, in January, my shit is changing to Street TV. I said, that's perfect, bro. Hit me in January. And he respected that and honored that, that we didn't get to it to... Uh, in January, so nah, I never thought that it wasn't no big enough. I wish you had a screenshot of it, but no, nah, I would never say that in the in the troll. I never had a platform that was too small for me. I've never I, there may be some too small enough to maintain my attention long enough to get to what they asked me for, but for me to say that, oh, you fuck with you too small, nah, that's never been me. Right, right, right. And I just wasn't aware of the the, the name. It's when people suggested I need to tap in, and they were telling me like, oh, it's a game bang type shit. It was just me saying, you can't teach me about LA Game Bang. I didn't know about you personally, your brand, where you was from, what it represented. It was just me being on my rapper tip, you know, the rapper that speaks out. You always number one, and I am an expert in the same subject matter that you guys are experts in. So it was kind of like, without me being aware of what they was talking about, I don't need to watch no Game Bang videos, I like to be educated on LA. So that's what it was. And then when I finally realized what it was I was speaking on, I was somewhat humbled. So that's, I reached out to you after I had that. And the fact that we just now got to it, I've been thinking all this time that that's what it was about, but I, that wasn't me in the comments either, though. All right. Yeah, yeah I always wondered, but we never talked about it. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, but yeah. but a lot of this is just lack of communication. We had, we you sent a text, I sent a text back. We didn't talk, we didn't communicate. And you so, know when I realized that maybe I had the wrong impression? I was watching, scrolling through YouTube, and I seen a nigga from Graveyard on your shit, d -Log. shout out d -Log, d -Log from Graveyard. Mm -hmm. And when I was a teenager, I was in uh, Supermax, and Cub was like the Gs nigga in the dorm. He was the oldest nigga, politician, fucked with the young Crips. He called, basically called the shots. And he's somebody I haven't necessarily thought about in quite some time. And just scrolling down YouTube, when you can see 20 plus years on a face, and it triggers something in the back of your mind, and then you look at the words, it's like, that is him. Mm -hmm. And you, I know you remember this because I got in your comments and I'm like, man, can you whoop de whoop de whoop? And next thing you know, I was in touch with D-Lo because I got in your comments. I said, okay, Kevin Mack ain't, you yeah, know, he ain't got no problem with me. So maybe it ain't what I thought it was. That was some months ago, probably like six, seven months ago. I'm highly misunderstood. A lot of people think I'm a hater. A lot of people think because of where I'm from and what, how I grew up that I hate this set or mm -hmm. this individual person from a different set, but it ain't like that. And as a lot of people know that's involved in this type of stuff, when you go to jail in prison, you could be as hard as you want, as tough as you want, but you're gonna end up befriending a rival. And that's what these, whatever you wanna call them, these guys is civilians or from other states, they don't understand how the culture actually works in California. That's deep, you brought that up, because I just looked at a video Alex recently did with the young nigga X4 from 40. Shout out to the young nigga with the wave right now. And Alex was discussing him, the subject of being such an active, young, face tatted type nigga. Um, how does he balance that with going to prison? And when you hear everything he ever said up until he was asked this question, you would think he wouldn't understand what we just expressed. Mm -hmm. But as soon as Alex asked him that, up until that point, everything was enemy K. Why, why, why don't give a fuck? Why, 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 why? But as soon as Alex described the prison environment and how do you balance that, he immediately snapped into, oh, you know, I know how it is. Get close fuck with it. 
op up there. I know what woo, 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 woo. I've been laced. I learned woo, woo, woo. And then he said to Alexis, and then what, why would you go back to that when you get back on the streets to the shit? He said, just because I got tight with one nigga up there don't mean everybody in the choir gonna sing the same note. And that's another thing out of town niggas don't understand. You'll see Dub C and Mac 10 and think everybody on their side and everybody on their side feel that way and think it's okay, but not knowing that's just personal relationships a lot of people balance. How do you being such a representative of such a brand name section with so many ops, how did you develop a ghetto pass to just go anywhere you want in the city and get, is it the poker face? You got a hell of a poker face on me. <laughs> oh my mama mama. You know what, that's a great question. I've been asked once before that same type of question. Uh, I don't feel like I got a pass to go anywhere. Mm. It's still places, you know, certain hoods I don't want to stop, I don't want to hang out at. And even during some interviews, I got my, my neck is on a swivel, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm looking left, right, back, you know what I'm saying? Because I respect that. I, I don't know if somebody hate me because of where I'm from or because of who I am. Mm -hmm. so I'm always skeptical, you know what I'm saying? But um, what, I, what I can say to that question is during jail and prison, I met some ops mm -hmm. and you know, it wasn't always cool when I first met some of them, but then we became cool. Mm -hmm. And um, I could dig it. I, I could give you uh, uh, one one example without going deep into detail. Deep as you choose, bro. My mom died while I was in prison. A couple ops got at me, man, with with uh, condolences cards. Mm -hmm. that, that meant the world to me. Yeah, how do you gang bang against that talk? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you you can't. <laughs> Especially when the reality sits in that your own homeboys and your closest didn't homeboy do didn't do it. <sighs> I had an op sending me paper, $50 here and there. I didn't have homies doing that. Mm -mm -mm. So <clears throat> um, it's an easy balance to to be unbiased mm. toward a set. I don't care if it's a Trey Gangster Inglewood family. It, it don't matter to me. Um, when you're dealing with the history, that's what it is. It's the history. You know, I'm out. I'm not one of those out there pressing for peace. I'm not mm -hmm. in the gang intervention or prevention. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna just, if I feel like there's a message for the youth, I'll give that message for the youth. But that's not what I concentrate on. I'm more into the history of it. When you speak on gang intervention versus history, there are a lot of controversial situations being spoken about online about the Giomi from Six O that almost the whole world on the street level respects. I've spent a lot of time respecting cuz. And Big U got some allegations where they try to bring up his name with gang intervention. And there's some paperwork online where his signature is on a contract. And I remember when it first went viral, my reaction to it was like, damn. I was disappointed, shocked, couldn't believe I saw what I saw. And I'm like, damn, it's 223, 2023. I don't believe cuz when he signed that shit. I say, gotta be some trickeration in the gang because I don't believe Big U would sign that type of uh, agreement. And I spoke on it in that fashion and I left it alone because it didn't look good at all. And I couldn't understand the G homie that I knew Big Draws to be. I couldn't understand him signing that. So I said what I said and I left it alone. I ain't harp on it. But it kind of, the story got bigger than just me speaking on it. And it ended up Big Draws coming on my um, platform almost some months after it went viral, discussing a whole nother subject, and he got at me. He like, yeah, cause you, you know, you know, I wouldn't sign no shit like that, cause nigga, they changed the wording. But just because you brought it up, this was not on my list of things to bring up. But you brought up gang intervention, and like a lot of people out here, I believe in what Big U push. All the shit we know that he represent. This the only black eye potentially that pops up that makes it hard to defend him. I was love to hear, I love when he said they changed the word. But you are expert and you a historian in this shit. Do that resonate with you? Do Am I a fool for believing that you, he didn't sign it until they changed the wording and they may be putting a triggeration online or do you believe that that might be a possibility that Cause I know how this shit go. Like it's easy to show something online and make it look like, but Cuz told me on Lightwood he didn't sign it till the wording was changed and I want to believe that. Well, I know the facts behind that whole situation, but uh, I'm not the one under the microscope being challenged on that. So the homie got to speak up for himself on that. And if he choose not to, that's his prerogative. But 
let's look at it like this, okay? Not that this is how it go, but just for for reference. Let's say you work for Alex Alonzo, mm-hmm. right? And now uh, he he's signing your checks, he's paying you. Mm-hmm. And now you under the microscope. Do you go out publicly and try to explain yourself to jeopardize your contract, to jeopardize your money? So no. so that that's the situation of he course. finds himself in. So he got to speak to that. I can't speak to But it's to certain that. people of a certain level of intelligence that over, under, understanding that immediately. And I'm one of them because a lot of times I, my character online becomes under question. And the only way you can put that fire out to the curious people is almost incriminate yourself. And if I have to explain and if I feel pressed to try to clarify you might fuck off your whole lick trying to prove to somebody it ain't what they think it is. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, but absolutely. But I know you're about eight years younger than me, mm-hmm. but we was brought up, and I'm sure you probably was too, we not doing a whole bunch of explaining. Oh, my mama, mama. If a dude want to be ignorant or hateful, that's his prerogative. Only thing with Big U is Big U has chose not to speak up on it. Why is and, so. that, and and and. It's wise for him and his family. Look, Cuz got a, a son in the NFL. Shout out to nephew. You know what I'm saying? They doing their thing. They doing the family thing. They family together. They all live in the same house. He ain't got no kids that don't live with him, no kids that he don't raise. He look out for other kids in the neighborhood. You know, He's looked the community. out for my children, my three boys. I mean, that's just what Cuz do, yeah. and a lot of people can't do it or don't know how to do it. They hate it. They fear it. They're scared of it. They're jealous of it. But again, it's up to Big U to speak on that. I, you know, Big U, my homeboy, I can't speak against or for that. He got to defend himself. But have you ever heard any conversation around the subject matter of the language of that contract being changed? From? I, I'm familiar with all that. Okay. And, yeah, the, the language was changed. That's all I want to hear because neighborhood on my blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. Uh, see, see, let me just say this, by the way. There's a lot of people in the gang intervention stuff right from so different many sets my different homies sets. too bloods crips east side west side all I, that i got right? some reputable niggas from my hood that have the that are in the exact same agreement with the same organization exactly. Is it? Oh, go ahead though. exactly but when you hear these hateful mouths mm-hmm. on youtube or the internet that either have a agenda against the homie or don't know the homie they don't understand that the whole city is up under the contract similar mm-hmm. to that. But the wording was changed for developing options. And I don't see an issue with it personally. Hey, but we're going to leave it like that, nailing the coffin. One time for the hometown champ, because everybody know Big U name is the biggest name at this point that has been exposed as somebody from the gutter out here that has bridged the gap between industry and streets. Uh, it's a thin line to walk anytime you got that much motherfucking exposure and you matter from your section and you want to do something positive to bring about change. That is something so difficult to bring about somebody that's not even from the inner circle having such a loud expertise on it after he was on cuz nuts so hard. It just make it difficult to try to get a lot of people who don't really know what's going on to understand. So I'm glad you came and brought some clarity to that. Right. I ain't never stopped fucking with cuz. I fuck with cuz. Yeah. Oh, my mama, mama, mama. So tell me this with that being said. Let, let me stop you before, before that. Hold that thought. Mm-hmm. Cuz also employed a lot of gang members in the city, too. Black men? Black men. <laughs> so he, not only is he. A couple essays, too. A couple essays. So not only is he involved in employing a certain generation of us, he's also involved in rearing and raising and through the athletic programs a whole nother generation of us. Absolutely. Now, now, now Spider Lock, you know, before you move on, mm-hmm. uh, the homie, the homie has been getting money for years. Mm-hmm. And the homie did a stretch in prison and come home. A lot of people, man, that, that, that weighs heavy on people's hearts because they can't get no money like that. Mm-hmm. And you know what money does, it creates envy and jealousy. Mm-hmm. You was a rapper, you was getting your paper, you know how it go. I'm yes, sure you sir. had some niggas hating on you or no, I have. tripping on how you politic in the rap Only industry. Only time my name that. ever, every time I had to deal with any kind of game bang politics, it wasn't until I was a famous rapper. That's when, until then, 
you know the brand of crip I am. Never name, never was on never no kind of nothing. Only time I ever had to even think about somebody caught themselves maybe wanting to speak my name in the politics was once I was on that type shit. Exactly. Yeah. You know I go. Mm-hmm. All right now, I'm going. Your, your hood, man, it's hard to, you know, avoid. As far as a collective, personalities, one section having representation, online, personalities, it's y'all. If we think about the industry in our general landscape, you guys have had the majority of the representation. My personal experience, my comrades start from being key to rock, corrupt, it goes on to the homie Brick Baby, neighborhood Nip the Crypt, the Keyway Christ, Big U, uh, J Stone, the homie, Pac Man, I've politicked with. So you guys kind of like had the biggest cluster that we know to grab from as far as personalities. Right now, in current time, it's almost true all over again with 600, Brick Baby, Big U, yourself. Most recently, the homie Brick cuz had some politics with your homies that bled over into a live and they kind of like got kind of like real, you, you dig a lot, it kind of got real like, you know, it was like tensions and shit was expressed and then Brick Baby went live, apparently over there in the section later on, saying like, yeah, this is what you, you got any thoughts on all that? You being an individual has been responsible to exposing the world to a certain degree to a lot of the insides that they wouldn't be uh, privy to naturally. Mm. You do it in a respectful journalistic manner. Do you see any similarities in what they're doing versus what you do? Or do you feel like what they did definitely needs to be offline and what you do is acceptable? Shit, you basically answered that yourself. (laughs) I didn't mean to ask it it like that. It's definitely not the way that I intended it to be or would hope for it to be. Uh, And hood politics, when you're going at each other, need to be offline. Agreed, definitely. Uh, it's simple to show up to an alley, a Thunderdome, or whatever, a meeting, a function, if you really want to get something off your chest. But uh, it's a big difference, man. Them was them was some real generals that you named. Mm. Key to Rock, real generals. I love Free to Rock. You know, and uh, homies with big reputations wouldn't handle themselves the same way the guys that we see online handling things mm. nowadays, right? No smut on these dudes. It's different times. Not at all. Different, different times. times. And everything is a learning process. Everything's a learning process. What I respect process. about Big Baby, he uses his terminology. He respects he respects the pecking order. He has no problem after being fully activated and emotional coming back and say, I digress. I apologize. And I think that goes a long way with a man that's standing on shit. Well, I get a lot of calls about the overheal general. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I, you know, a lot of people wondering, like, how does he get that title? Who gave mm. it to him? That title's not self-made. Mm. You know, there's a lot of dudes that came before that that participated in internal mm. um, mischief. So, and go ahead. So, are you suggesting maybe his direct assignment should be balancing your current shine and status with? the whole history of what established that you standing on. I'm suggesting that you said he's respectful to his older homies and the older homies feel like he's putting himself on a pedestal that Mm. he didn't earn. Mm. Mm. You know, but he, he, you know, in this podcast and business, he, he's a great personality. That's Shout why out his to name pops. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the way you carry yourself yeah. with the podcast situation, the whole online personality. And yeah. I also appreciate the fact that he's able to have a type of static with the 60s and it be resolved without Cuz having to get fucked all the way over. Has that situation been revol- resolved? I have no idea. He said it has. The only reason I'm asking you this shot to bring Night Bud, we spoke about this um, Tuesday on another platform. So that's why, I feel. Yeah. otherwise I wouldn't have spoke on it at all. Yeah, I don't know about it, you know what I mean? But what I do know is you see a lot of dudes in the turf that have beef with other homies. Then all of a sudden the next day there's no beef. So you gotta wonder like what's going on? Are these skits or somebody oh. paying somebody? Somebody giving somebody a bag to get off their back, you know? I, uh, again, like I'm older, homie, and and, and um, if you I don't, don't tell nobody. I ain't gonna know. Yeah, I don't know the youngsters. Like I don't know a lot of the youngsters. You know what I mean? And I don't know a lot of the young hood politics. So I refrain from all that. But what I'm saying is, typically, 
um, to straighten that out like that fast and there's no fight, it's no squabble, it's no shootout, it's got to be a bag and play. But, Do you think that it possibly could have been a fight that was agreed not to be talked about? Cause I know the way shit go. My name, I done been in shit on the internet where my name got viral and it seemed like it had to do something with gangs and hoods and homies and then it, it, it get resolved and like it never to be spoken about again. And we don't go announce to the internet what actually took place to have it Facts. all, you feel me? Facts, that can't happen. But your question was, do I think? No, okay, I don't think, less. I don't think. It's just an opinion, <laughs> I don't think so. But um, the youngsters go handle things the way they handle things, you know what I mean? But. Um, our hood is big, a lot of different personalities, a lot of different sections. So everybody don't always see eye to eye, and everybody don't know all the business, like you said. Right. They could have went in the backyard, got down, and squashed it. Who knows? So yeah, and that's and I suggesting that they did, but we can't. You never know. I respect the fact. I didn't like the way it bled over online, and I see your homies that was speaking against the homie. I respect whatever they chose to do, but I like the fact that that's all we saw. We ain't seen no more. So obviously they didn't thought about it readdressed it and they dealing with it differently too however they gonna deal with it they not dealing with it with like that keeping it going i appreciate i respect that yeah yeah well the homies the homies handle things in ways that uh, are not conventional sometimes but uh y'all yeah, got one of the coldest yeah. phrases associated with y'all sex and we ain't gonna have to utter it but yeah y'all handle <laughs> things quite uniquely man mm -hmm. like you crip yeah, but uh, yeah, it happened crazy a lot of days. Tell me this though, magazine, what is it, is it Fresh Hood? All Hood Publications. All Hood Publications? Yes, yes. So like journalism, when did it get in your, your blood that- Man, I don't know, man. To be honest, I don't know. But Explain to those who don't know what we are talking about. You're a digital creator, but it didn't start digitally. What was it? You start digitally first and then did the magazine? I'm not sure the year the magazine started. 2005, August 2005. And um, I don't know, man. I just used to look at Alex shit online, and I thought Shout out to A three. You know, they, I I got a homeboy named One Shot, Big okay. Shawnee Mac. That's the homie, right? The homie <laughs> used to buy magazines and books all the time, so he was into the Feds and Don Diva, mm. and I was telling him I had been talking about doing a magazine, but I'd never seen Feds and Don Diva. Vario. So the homie is bringing magazines over like, look, check this out, check this one out, check this one out. I said, that's it right there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a West Coast version of that. Now, for all the homies in the penitentiary that want pictures of bad bitches <laughs> and um, some up-to-date information, I could mix in with the gang history. Mm -hmm. So it all came together in one package. That's fly, because you, know. you almost answered my next question. I was gonna ask you if you considered it somewhat of a West Coast version of uh, Don Diva. Absolutely. I swear to God, then you said that. T um, tell me this, um, damn, what was the thought? I had a, a great thought that slipped my mind, but I'll I go back to an original thought that I had. Um, have you ever run into any resistance with you being involved with shining a light on a lot of the intricacies and the stories that um, are associated with our experience, dude. Yeah, uh, slightly. Uh, let's say the first issue with the Athens part, got a little static from that. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the bounty hunters and grapes. Grapes grapes wasn't hostile, but the grapes was So like, I got history with the grapes that- Yeah, we got history. Mm -hmm. Damn near everybody, really. <laughs> Especially when you combine the industry, right? You know, okay. And, and so, the bounty hunters had an issue, mm. and uh, of you coming over there, no, d giving out the layout of oh, okay, of how the they history. get down, okay. Who, who who was the individual? I'm not that gonna you, say okay. his name. And, and, and did he hold you down and, in the situation? You guys, you guys know the guy. It gotta be. Now I know. I now I know. Yeah, yeah. But, I know. but everybody. Shout, I don't know him, but shout out to him because yeah. I see him doing his thing. Everybody name don't need to be mentioned. You I know agree. What I'm saying? So I agree. Um, so just just them three really, and 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 that's issue one and issue two. After that, a lot of people started supporting me and getting behind me. Mm -hmm. you know? How do you feel with being a pioneer of this type of content and one of the only ones that was doing it wasn't wasn't considered cool? You had to be the nerd guy, the camera guy, and now everybody in their mama. Yeah. Is trying to be the guy you and Alex was 15, 20 years ago. How does that feel? Do you feel like you get your just recognition? No, no. You know, you know what's funny? Alex used to seem a little irritated 
back in the day, right? We never had this conversation, okay. but that's how it appeared he was getting a little irritated. By your, your rise and your success? Yeah, mm. and I didn't understand it. Mm. But then it seemed like when I came in, I feel like it's me and Alex, Against and now them. I'm starting to feel like Alex. <laughs> like, where you niggas coming from? And like, you niggas ain't legit, and you ain't paid your dues. Dub C had a song, That's pay right. your dues. Pay the, do, these yes, dudes yeah. ain't paid their dues. Yes. You know what these dudes do? They go get a clip from Alex and get mm -hmm. clips from me yes. and make their own clip. I'm glad I'm here to help establish the two founders of this shit, even though Alex does not really expose a certain side of himself. It's like you are the Dub C, he's the Mac 10 of this shit. And people probably don't really realize that about Alex because, but he grew up in a more redful than beautiful side of our city. Yeah. And you guys both have the same similar expertise and knowledge about the landscape and have chose to like, you know, go on the insides and bring it out. So I look at you guys as the the goats of the both sides of the, even though Alex's not really a, you know, affiliated to the extent we have been or is or doesn't present himself in that fashion, he still comes from that side of the track. So I look at you guys as like the opposite side of the color spectrum doing the same thing. I would love to do a collab where I can be looking into you guys' perspective and I can be the producer and kind of like maybe ask you guys the same 20 questions when you guys are not around and get your perspective on the same exact questions. Can I be allowed to produce something similar I, to that? I, I agree to that. Thank you, thank you, Look, gentlemen. Thank I, you. Me and Alex had a conversation. Alex is nodding, y'all. He's nodding in the green in the back, okay. Me and Alex had a conversation about that. I told him I'll, I'll do a collab with him. We just gotta figure out what it is that we gonna collab there on. There you go. But it's funny that you even bring this conversation up because and when I walked in, you may remember, I said, Alex, man, you never took a picture together. Yes, I heard that. I've been knowing this guy for decades. That's hard. And and the reason why it was on my mind, I wanted to post a picture of me and Alex mm. and kind of say what you said. Like, you know, this is the top right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, Rushmore. Like, we the football commissioner and yes, everybody sir. else just the team owners. You know what yes, I mean? Sir. That's how I feel. I'm going to help y'all establish that because I'm not y'all. And if you feel personally that's how y'all feel and you don't really want to be saying it, I say it first. And now you can just agree with me. Yeah, everybody that know what's happening know that's what it is. Salute to both of y'all. Yeah, I was about to say that. I got to give a shout out to my Mac kids and Maniacs. They know I'm humble. They know I don't talk like that, but that's how so I, I feel, and that's what I'm saying today. As you should. I ain't mad at you, man, because a lot of times we wait too late to figure shit out or deliver flowers that are deserving, and I'm trying to be active and extending them when a person can appreciate them. So you definitely got that coming here up out of me. Now, do you mind if I get somewhat messy? You could get messy. You don't mean I'll answer. All right. You have an interest of capturing as much as the hip-hop LA street gang landscape as you possibly can as far as authentic members and catching them in their natural environment. Have you ever had any interest whatsoever in capturing anything affiliated with a name such as Snoopy Badass? Yeah, I did. I did at one point. You know why? Because mm -hmm. Snoopy Badass got that old DJ Quick look. Throwback. Throwback blood. The B, the G Perico. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The, the swap me version of the of the, of the fly Jeep. Uh, yeah, I yeah. get it. I, I know a lot that of spark. That sparked my interest in him too. Initially, go ahead. I know a lot of people don't like with him. They don't, don't like him and don't mess with him. Back to what you were saying about the, being from sixty. I'm unbiased. I'm neutral in the Snoopy badass hate and all that. And, uh, some of it I find funny. <laughs> Me too. Um, but he he stay popping it. He pops slick. He stay down for what he believe in. Um, what does he believe in? When you say that, because I don't want to just that, that, give him any credit he don't deserve. Because he's definitely someone who's established him as an op. So just tell me, what do you? When you say he stand on what he believe in, what do you believe he believes in? That he's hard. That he's tough. Mm. Nobody never put hands on him. Mm. He run off fades, and mm. and that's how. He feel, and that's how it look like he feel. That's what he represents, that's what he speaks. Now, do I know that to be true? No, I don't. I, mm -hmm. I can only take it at face value. Mm -hmm. And you being um, a native out here all these years, you from the west side of Los Angeles, but however, you are extremely familiar with everything from Venice to Long Beach <laughs> to the, you know how the streets have a vibration and it ain't hard to figure out who you about to talk to before you talk to them. Mm -hmm. So I ain't gonna put you on the spot to slander cuz, but I was just trying to set up this clip because I want to get your perspective on what he has to say. You know, recently 
I've made multiple appearances on the jumper. There's been no announcement of me being an employee there, being somebody that's going to be returning there. I've maybe been there three or four times in my whole life, but the, the majority of the times were like in rapid succession recently. This is a guy I've seen at No Jumper multiple times through the years. But I want you to listen to this clip. I just want your perspective on it. Because this is either from late last night or early today, I believe. He didn't say my name, but anyone listening can assume my presence on No Jumper caused him to go on this rant. So I just want to get your perspective. Mm. My nigga, you can't have all these neighborhood crips on your platform and think niggas supposed to look at it like a unbiased platform. Nigga, that is a, un, that is a, it's becoming a biased ass platform. And I'm gonna tell him that to his face. So y'all get ready, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I don't, I don't like that shit, bro. That, that, that's some weird shit. Nigga, like, nigga, you can't do that, nigga. I'm gonna address it, I'm gonna speak on it. And let the public take care of it from there, nigga. Cause everybody gonna see what I see. That shit ain't that shit ain't real, nigga. I don't like that shit, nigga. I don't like it, nigga. I don't give a fuck, nigga. Dead homies. Everybody not from neighborhood, nigga. Dead homies, nigga. Everybody not don't lean towards their politics, my nigga. They gonna do bullshit to protect each other, nigga. They gonna they gonna sweep they butt all they gonna sweep all they buster ass shit they do under the rug. Cause they got access to that platform. No, nigga. I'm Snoopy badass, nigga, and I'm not happy, nigga. <laughs> Feel me? I'm not on nobody's side, nigga. I'm about fairness, nigga. I'm about truth, nigga. Straight the fuck up, nigga. I don't give a fuck if you from neighborhood, if you from over, if you a bumpin' and pie rule. I don't give a fuck if you a Serrano, nigga. Feel me? If you make music, nigga, and you a real nigga, you deserve a fair chance in this, nigga. It shouldn't be one side controlling a platform like that, nigga. And I don't give a fuck how nobody feel about it, nigga. That's not real, nigga. And Adam, nigga, I ain't feeling that, nigga. Feel me? Yo, you better, you need, you need to clean that shit the fuck up, nigga. I fuck with Adam 22, nigga, but that right there, that's not gonna fly with this culture. He gonna get himself in a wreck doing that, nigga. Feel me? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my Hoover niggas. Shout out to my real neighborhood niggas. Shout out to my real Damus, my nigga. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about, nigga. Y'all know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about, nigga. I don't like none of it. I don't like it. So if y'all want to know how I feel about it, I don't like it, nigga. Straight the fuck up, nigga. Nah, we don't give a fuck how you feel, but go ahead, Matt. Well, first of all, everybody's entitled to run their platform how they wish to, to run it. And whoever their guests are, are their guests, period. Second of all, since he mentioned neighborhood, <laughs> neighborhood is... Got to be the deepest alliance in LA. Come on. You man. got the 40s to the 100s and you got the east side, east coast. So, Not you even got the 11 Deuce neighborhoods too. The Linwoods. Linwood, Linwood for mm -hmm. sure. And, and West Covina, all West that. Covina. So, yeah. it's going to always be more neighborhoods being interviewed or in the rap industry, whatever. He from Paris, though? He. And you from Paris, you an ex neighborhood yourself. You jump ship too quick, but go ahead. Man, so you gotta expect that. And that sounds personal to me. Extremely personal. Because just think about the only neighborhoods we know working no jumper is C Mac and Brick Baby. That's it. Me personally, I've been there a couple times recently, and this triggers this type of reaction out this guy. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you mentioned C Mac, so yeah, it's personal. It's personal. Oh, well, shout out to Nia. With her fine, sexy, sweet singing ad. But my thing is this though, Spider Low. Why do we care what No Jumper is doing? Why do we care what Adam is doing so it, much? Mm, you know what? You know what it brings me to. This is something we've all heard a lot recently. I don't even know where it comes from, but it's a. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Mm -hmm. Fuck them. You dig a lies. I know what it is. I don't want. I just really. I didn't even want to bring your motherfucking caliber of conversation down to cuz, but I just had to get that off because it was current today. I was on my way to a scheduled appointment to talk to a content creator legend, and he's a buffoon that we all are familiar with. So I just had to slip that on you to just break up the, uh, Adam, Alex is gonna make a clip of this for me tonight. Cause this, we gotta have this one tonight. I just want to get you caught up in some of it. Cause you know what, as a G nigga out here, I want to give you your props for not falling into the, I could get away, I could get twice as much money if I get involved in the clickbait and the current events. Hey, you don't man, do hey, it. Hey, do what you do. But I salute you for not doing it. 
I try not to. But I'm going to go ahead and say it again. I, I fucks with Snoopy Badass as far as the comments go. Never met him. You know what I'm saying? Never met him, but we, but you, we communicate. Okay, I got to do this for you then. Because I'm going to let you know what I and the rest of your viewers and my viewers view you as. An expert on the Los Angeles County yeah. gang landscape. So for you to say you acknowledge, honor, and or respect Snoopy Badass, please explain to us where he fits into the landscape that we are aware of, the, the shit that we respect. You come from 4,800 days. Yeah, yeah so you So where know does what? he fit but, in? But, but see, you got to understand, and for whoever's viewing this, need to understand, I'm not saying like we didn't put in work together or I seen him thunder some shit in the county jail. I'm saying he respectfully got at me on Instagram. And I like the style, and so we fuck with each other on the text. Like I said, I ain't never met him or nothing like that, but I'm not going to throw him under the bus other than the NAC comments because you're talking about, man, you're talking about a big alliance. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to even drag you into the personal implications of my interactions with him, but I respect your political re reaction, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning from y'all, bro. I, you know, in a lot of ways, I view y'all as – mentors in what I'm doing now. Yeah. And I, I, I watch, in, in another bigger sense, I also watch Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, Farrakhan. Because it's something about being a man of principles, integrity, and still being able to answer questions on the spot while you're being watched and maintaining an appropriate perspective. It's a cold balance. And it is. I see a lot of you guys who have who do it very well. And I'm, I'm attempting to learn, because you know me, I'm like, we had facts with Phyllis, and that's so, so yeah, raw. It's yeah, like, yeah. facts, facts, hey, facts, hey, facts, hey, facts, hey, facts, hey, facts. Hey, look, I thought about that last night. I said, facts over feelings. <laughs> we got to take the feelings out and stick to the facts. I thought about that last night, man. Mm. I, I give you that. You know why I arrived to that as a title that I, I stick with? It's not because feelings are irrelevant, they don't matter, or they're invalid. They're so relevant, they matter so much that I realize you cannot take nobody's feelings from them. Mm-hmm. So everybody is entitled to their feelings. You can have them there to be respected. So if we're coming to a public platform to discuss any subject matter, feelings are so unique. They're like assholes. Everybody got one. You're entitled to yours. I'm entitled to mine. There's nine people at this table. Everybody's entitled to their own feelings. We all respect it. You can have them. Guess what that's going to do if we're trying to base the bottom line we're trying to reach on everybody's feelings? What's that? <laughs> yeah, it's so unique. Yeah. So since I respect your feelings, respect mine, we respect his, hers, 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 the best thing we can do is if we're sitting here and it's a hammer coming down and we don't want our toes hurt, we get our, let's get our feelings out. Let's get our toes out the way. And we all can agree on facts. That's something we already agree on. <laughs> let's discuss these hey, facts. Here's something else. <laughs> oh, that's how I came to that. I like that title, though. I, I like to talk about but like yeah, it. thank you. I appreciate it. But yeah. that's how I came to it. And guess what? Off the camera, the feelings are safe for brothers, mm -hmm. husband, wife, daughter, son, mother, woo. I've often, as a young kid, looked at the whole word love as when people try to describe what love is, I said, this is what love is to me. As a person, you have rules and boundaries that protect your, your emotions and shit. Love is when you drop them for anybody for any reason and give them the opportunity to hurt that or damage that. And that's my definition of love. So that just kind of ties in with that thought. Facts over feelings for me is, your yeah, feelings are unique, we'll, we'll, but for the public, if we can only discuss the things we agree upon and use those um, facts to analyze what we're discussing, I think we can get to the right answer that best suits everybody. Facts. Good looking. <laughs> right on. Mm -hmm. From the legend Kev Mack. Mm -hmm. That's good confirmation for um, something I've been on for a long time. Hey, but I want to say this, by the way. I don't talk I, your I, shit. I don't know where you're going after this conversation, mm -hmm. but I told Alex when I come to town, this was about seven months ago, that I'm going to come see And so I hit you and I hit Alex because this is the only podcast I really like that's on YouTube. <sighs> I don't really, you you can have three, five million followers, whatever, but I like your conversation. I like the, the way you are. Uh, and that's humbling to me. Thank you, you big homie. You word everything. And I think Alex is a professional. He's the closest we got to being a professional that's non-white. And, oh, and so I respect that. And I, I just thought this was the, I don't like talking. 
a lot, and a lot of people invite me to their platform. A lot of people, and I, I don't go. I'll turn it down. But I just have to come here. And one more thing I want to say, going back to Brick Baby, a uh, part of the problem is a lot of people want Brick Baby seated, no jumper. I'm gonna leave it at that. Oh my mama, mama! And I know I'm glad that you didn't see my conversation with Brick Baby. But first, let me say. I humbly received that. Thank you, man. Y'all know that, that that spoke volumes to me, man. But I basically ended my conversation with Brick Baby on that subject matter, quoting 50 Cent, saying, I'm the nigga at the bar to the good life. You ain't trying to pull me back, right? And then he also included that them is his homies. He spoke about the love, the camaraderie, the disagreement. But he said he summed it up in front of the world saying, you know some of them want to be media media creators. Mm -hmm. He spoke that out, so I, I get that. I get it. I can't even say as much as I like to, you know, pat my own back, brush my shoulders off, me being Baby Spider from 97th Street, I haven't even been above an unwarranted attack online from a member, an affiliate, an associate. So if it has happened to me, whether I deserve it or not, it can, I can see it happening to the homie. But I'm glad to be able to be involved with the process of bringing reputable, respected members from the same section in a good matter of time that could come and just give a more broader perspective so the homie don't have to be out here going horse trying to explain his own story. Because it looked bad to a lot of people once it bleed over and they don't know the politics and getting it over with and it's dead and it looked like you just took one on the chin and don't nobody want to be the only one out here speaking for themselves saying, oh, it ain't like that. I just feel um, I'm glad I'm able to help have the conversation be a bit better, a little better understood. And I hope they all succeed, man. You know what I want to appreciate you for? The way you jumped on the promotional campaign for the 600 and cartoon fight. Yeah. Now that we got a chance to get a little more familiar, it's not over with. I'll show you some shit later, let you know right where we at with it for this. We're crossing our fingers on a December 14th date, mm -hmm. and it'll be a, a nice event. But. When I first popped up on your live and asked you this question, you didn't want to like pick a favorite. It's been about a month, month and a half. Mm -hmm. Are you leaning one way versus the other? Financially, yeah, <laughs> six hundred all the way. And, Ooh. Well, let me tell, let me explain. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. Cause my opinion, I could sway either way. Mm -hmm. Excuse the word, the term. Yeah, ain't like I, that. I could go either way. But my thing now is I've accepted bets mm. going for cartoons, so I don't have no choice now but hope 600 wins so I ain't got to send mm. none of them niggas no money. <laughs> you feel me? That's that's a that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. And I'm going to have to put my vote in. And at this point, if I had to bet, not that I am desiring at this point, because I, I don't have a bet. So I don't desire a cartoon to win. Mm. I don't want him to win. Mm. But if I had to bet, I would bet on cartoons. So then I would have to be saying, I believe and hope he went for the sake of my money. But just me, and I'm keeping it to Google, standing in between the two of them, mm -hmm. and just getting the physical awareness of their presence in close proximity, their energy mentally, mm -hmm. without me having anything else to go on, I kind of lean with cartoon. Yeah. That's all I could say. Originally, I would I would go with cartoon. Originally, but then when I, I see, would do six hundred. But, but then when you think that six hundred got a professional experience mm. and he's a big dude doing pull ups, kind of changes things a little bit. See, I was going with the cartoons of Beast off the East Side. He done been in the pen with some of my homies and ain't got nothing but the utmost respect for cartoon. Nothing bad to say about him. I'm like, cartoon got this easy. Then I see 600's fights on tape. Mm. 600 garbage. Walking. She boo boo. <laughs> Cartoon gone dog walk this dude. But again, when I see the pull ups and and hear for myself that Cuz is doing his working out and all this, and nah, it kind of even things out. Like just gonna be a good fight. But I when the money come in, man, I got to go where the money at. And you think the money? And it seems like 600 is a Vegas betting guy. And you say the money line would be with 600. Well, 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 what I'm Oof. saying, I'm not even going to go that far. I'm going to stop at niggas is cash-apping me 
wanted mm. to bet on cartoon. So I can't cheer for the guy who the I'm going to have to pay out the money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In that sense, cartoon's the favorite. You know why? One of the defining little intricacies that caused me to just say I would lean toward cartoon, we were doing a photo shoot. Mm. And during the photo shoot, 600, and it could be deceptive. I could be wrong. But he stands so flat-footed. <laughs> it's, it's, he has a confidence. It's mm. extremely confident. But his elder of almost 20 years is bouncing on every step yeah, yeah. and he don't drink he don't smoke he's throwing combinations at the air and at the same, he's bouncing on this I, I didn't see i was glad to see after that some footage of 600 actually running sprints online see because i see some bounce yeah i see some cardio other than that 600 you know what you're showing everybody chili cheese fries and cigars right. so it's a difference in you know cartoon he is a person that only consumes water and he had that bounce and he had that energy. One is like an overt confidence and the other one was an introverted confidence. And it could be deceptive. I'm not saying that it's gonna be an easy win, but I just felt like at, at that point, if I had to bet, I would bet on cartoons. So I think December the 14th is the still tentative date. And as soon as I get that locked in within the next week, I'm gonna tap into you because we're gonna have an actual promo, promotional program we gonna have to sell some uh, pay-per-views, man. I think you can help us right, man, and sure. make it worth it, bro. Shout out to Cartoon, too, man. Shout out to Cartoon and 600, man. Y'all who are not aware, we will be having a battle with the Giants, Godzilla versus King Kong, December 14th. On pay-per-view, details to be announced very, very soon. Oh, my mama, mama. Y'all had, like, a very... Um, publicized public funeral recently. Rest in peace to the young Mad Ronnie. I forget who else lost their life. Uh, that evening, I believe y'all lost two homies. One. One. I know of. Okay, my bad. Two uh, got shot. Two got shot. All right. I know a lot of my homies, saw my homie Joker from the Deuce, attended the funeral. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's obvious what Mad Ronnie meant to the culture in general. Any things you want to say to him just in his memorial or at all just based on the fact he's one of the most recent lost ones that was publicized? Uh, I'll, I'll say this much. Uh, I couldn't make it for financial reasons. Uh, I love the homie Mad Ronnie. That was a good homie. Mad Ronnie, what separates him from the, a lot of the Gs, Mad Ronnie messed with every single generation. Mm. He was in the trenches with every young homie that came up. Mm. So shout out to Mad Ronnie. Rest in peace. Uh, I want to say this, the homie Big Rick had uh, was accompanied by a dude on the original Jungle. Mm. I got a picture I'll show you too. Yeah, We're not gonna it. put it online. Cause right. I don't have our big homie's blessings. That's but right. He come to the funeral red down, one of the original Jungles. And so that was that's a testament to the reputation man. You think, had. you think people can get away with that now because it's 2023? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Go ahead. I don't want to shit on him, salute to him, but yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, but these dudes are older now. But still, too, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. like some of my, my, my Damu homies, they like talk to me and they be like, blah, blah, and they try to apologize. I don't even get offended. I'm like, it's cool. Like yeah. Munchie B, I talk to him a whole lot and he tries to be very careful when he play blood. I do the same thing. And since, since we started the subject, like I saw Munchie B on your platform recently. What inspired that, knowing his reputation for being such an anti? Mm -hmm. Anti 60, yeah. Yeah, and then a reptile. Yeah. So I Ron Ron spoke on him very highly when he was here. And then I saw you extend that love to him. Is that just the honor of at the top, we know what it is and the culture that we want to see our whole thing do it better? Or do you have a personal relationship with him? Or what is uh, it? Me, me and, me and uh, Monty, we exchanged text messages. You know what I'm saying? He shot me his number. We text each other. But we ain't got no friendship. I ain't never met Monty. I mean, no friendship outside of the texting. Mm -hmm. uh, I never met Monty. But here go the thing. Monty is sat with Lil A.D., my homie. He sat with Ron Ron, the homie. So when I thought about getting Ron Ron on, what's the next good guest I could have? Mm. Ron Ron and, and Monty like synonymous with their names right now as far as the internet goes. Oh, yeah. So he's the first one that came to mind, and I know I, he's within reach. So I just hit Monty. Mm. Like, oh, I respect it. Well, Monty's become one of my comrades, not only because we are like, I would say not um, co-workers, but we're somewhat working under the same umbrella mm. as counterparts under the street TV right, umbrella. Right, right. 
and we become um we, we, we become fluent with text messages and communicating. And I kind of like assumed initially that the communication was all based upon us landing here together. But then I realized that he had an appreciation for me as an artist that extended beyond that. And he also has like connections and ties to people that are very close to me that I had no idea. So I just feel um, refreshed because I know Cuz got certain rumors and stories on his name that what we consider kind of mm -hmm. trying to smut him out. Mm -hmm. And he there's a there's a good length he can go to clear this shit up. To, yeah. Whether it's true or not, for his side as a defense attorney at the moment, he has a, some information he can be offering regularly that would kind of throw a whole lot of clarification on the situation that he's trying to clear, but it would put someone else in a bad light. I just want to give him his flower flowers for being humble enough and standing on his principles enough to even know he could throw another nigga name in the mix and not put him in the twist he don't do that because that's a hard one to try to take down without he has a platform where he goes live where he goes public on his podcast every day and he's not spending his energy trying to spin that narrative so somebody like ron ron somebody like kev mack baby spider from 97th street being able to show some support to the opposite narrative maybe being true, I just feel like I appreciate that. And I'm glad you was mature enough to speak on him positively and invite him on your platform. Yeah, well, he got at me over the phone and um, he brought the incident up. Mm. You know it was in the back of my mind. I know, right? everybody, yeah, everybody we but, talked, he knows that. But he brought it up. That's how I respect him. And he told me a little bit about to get down and I didn't ask no questions, I didn't go into detail, I didn't want to hear no more. Mm -hmm. So I left it at that, you know what I'm saying? If he, he had enough heart and was man enough to even bring it up, so I give him that. Um, outside of that, Mon Monchi, look, I got several reputable homies that got at me and they liked the interview. So that was surprising to me, but that's when I know I'm doing my job right. That's the climate we in though, and I think that you and Alex should be able to benefit on the fact that the city is there because You've, you, there are people from opposite sides that have uh, learned to have a love and appreciate for somebody just based on the light that you guys have shined them on yeah. them. And you might not never know that. Right. You would never think that somebody watched a video one day and heard a nigga say some shit that they could relate to. And it was only because you guys gave them a platform. Mm -hmm. And as um, this whole culture is being captured, documented, presented, monetized, I have an interest in making sure those that are the pioneers have a spot in this shit. I salute to what Adam doing. I salute to what others doing. But I believe those that are really the pioneers from our actual shit need they flowers too. Right. On oh, my mama mama. I want to ask you this. Wait, let me let me okay, go let ahead. me stay on Monty real All quick. All right, go ahead. The homie Caesar. Caesar's like a big brother to me, Inglewood family, one of the co-founders, right? Seven seven, off seventy six, but seven. Little Barry Inglewood family, shout out to my loved one. Go ahead. So little Caesar tried to hook me up with Munchie years ago, mm. but I wasn't fucking with Munchie because of what you said. He was still anti mm. on me. So and the same thing happened with little Sodi, rest in peace from A Trey Gangs. Little Sodi, he mm. tried to holler at me on, it wasn't on good Twitter, timing. and I told him the time is bad on me. Timing is too bad. I can't fuck with you. Did y'all ever get to get to it? Nah, and I hate, I regret it now. Mm. I regret it, but I got to talk to Munchie. You know what okay. I'm saying? And so, so that was one of the little Caesar's wishes that me and Munchie hooked up. And it's, it's done now. I, I like to be able to uh, be able to do things for people outside of what they can do, and, and kind of like it wasn't your interest. But you was able to make one of your loved ones satisfied, so you feel like you did something. Well, it's not that it wasn't my interest because it was. Okay. But while you dissing the hood, <laughs> it's not the time to be talking. Right. You know, right. But... Explain to the non affiliates, the outsiders, how we know how that's. How do we get? Explain to them how we how we are able to get beyond that. Because when you look at C Mac, you think we can't get beyond a tattoo on your forehead. And a lot of people may be looking at the position he take on certain issues and thinking there's the majority of us involved that took that same position on some section. How do you explain or how do we get the people to understand how you could be stumped down through and through and still be able to process that type of relationship, that type of understanding with an ex-member? Do you look at it like uh, 
me personally, I look at it like this, and I may be killing your opportunity to answer the question, but I view it like this. I've shared this with Alex. Because Reggie Wright, he pisses me off with this. Who's a, He's a, a, a person I, I'm, I'm cool with, though. But he pissed me off with this because Reggie, you have to justify your relationship with Reggie by saying, damn, he the police, used to be the police, right? Okay. But when I met Reggie, he was up on the shit, a whole bunch of gangster shit. He was ex-police. He was security, wasn't no police. I just used to hear about the police shit, and I see him in his element. Then years after that, I saw Reggie in the streets doing thug shit, gangster shit, right before he went to the feds and all that. So now you see Reggie on the internet with a, per, uh, a presence. He's a person you really know, you fuck with, and you try to justify, okay, he's okay, he has whatever. But then you'll see Reggie on here cheering for a nigga to go to jail. And it's like, damn, how do you balance your, uh, your uh, respect for Reggie and your desire to see a nigga to go to jail. I just had a brain fart, man. I was trying That's to all right. Well, this this isn't help me out. This isn't an occupation, so I don't have a boss to answer to, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't need justification for who I talk to and who I interview or who's my friends. Mm -hmm. There is none. There's no explanation to nobody for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My homies that know me gonna know it's genuine, and they're not gonna question why I fuck with whoever I fuck with. I just took so much game from that. I'm gonna take that and put that in my motherfucking repertoire as a reaction and understanding of um, an answer to similar questions because I sometimes I struggle with balancing some things that I don't agree with and still having an audience with that individual. And this is where I first learned how to do it. Going out in public, conducting business, and the person on the opposite side of the cash register is a male, but they're not attracted to women. <laughs> And learning how to just be, act like I don't notice mm -hmm. it and be cordial, it's taught me how to deal with a lot of people that I don't necessarily agree with on an issue of principle because every interaction is not about the principles that you might be seeing being violated. Correct, especially when you're into the media. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, I struggle with being called a journalist, but a lot of my homeboys understand I'm into the journalism world. Mm -hmm. So it ain't all about that, you know, this nigga from that mm -hmm. side and this side, you know, he got into it with the homie, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? If we do that, if Baby Spider, Kev Mac, Alonzo, if we start doing that, we are not gonna be able to interview nobody. Thank you, thank you. And that's what I learned about my plight in the industry, period. I realized the line I've been pushing from day one caused me to be on the outside of a lot of conversations I perhaps would have been on the inside of because I was operating under what you just said and it's gonna alienate people. Mm -hmm. And I watched the blueprint that this nigga put out because he understands integrity, principles, morals, like we do. And then he went through this in industry as everybody friends. Sometimes I feel like he had a prof prophetic experience. He did. He had to, because right before he passed, he was cool with everybody. Guess what he said? I ain't nothing like you. Mm -hmm. He made sweets. Mm -hmm. well, come on, man. We know how calculated he was. And deep. how does your debut album title? You don't run until the whole race is over. Is when you run the day. How how do you prepare for months, two years? Your debut album, the title. If you don't have some type of inclination spiritually i don't know if it was right here on his front conscious it might have been the subconscious it could have been something that he knew directly but there was some type of connection with his plight and what he was preparing to do the marathon that means it's a long race but then i'm preparing the victory lap and it's my debut give me your thoughts on that no nah, i just think he's very prophetic um he's a smart individual he used to do a lot of uh listening to audio books mm. and he soaked up the game not just from authors but from homies in the hood you know he find his favorite homie maybe one hustled maybe one was a leader maybe one got you know um politic he knew how to maneuver and take a little bit from everybody and that became him that's true and i appreciated him for that i remember at, at a time shortly before he passed i used to think he was speaking to me and riddles of bullshit shooting me to the left, just trying to give me an answer to a question that, and then I started realizing this nigga really talks like a fucking poetry book. His thoughts yeah. come out like that. 
Nah, he was good at what he did, man. You mentioned one of your homies recently, Shawnee Mac, Big Shawnee Mac. Yeah. Um, I believe that him and 600 got a, a close alliance. Is that the same S Mac that I'm familiar with? That's the same one. Okay, shout out to the homie, Night Bud. Oh, my mama, mama. Tell me this. From being a regular nigga growing up, West Side Rolling, what caused you to be interested in taking a camera and wanting to point it? You, I told Alex that people like you, such as yourselves, remind me of the movie The City of God. You know that underlying story of that movie. You know the familiar with the movie City of God? No. Nah. Oh, you got to watch it, cuz. It's a gangster movie, but it's like in a third world country, like in the Caribbean. Brazil. Brazil. It's really thuggery. And when you first watch it, you know, the streets, we only loved it. It's such a cold movie. It's not even in English. You gotta watch the subtitles. Mm -hmm. But it's so G, nigga, you gonna read them, man. You gonna figure it out. Mm -hmm. But because of that, it takes us, all we see is the gangster scenes. But if you watch it four or five times, you realize the whole fucking movie is about a nigga that got his hands on the camera and loved to capture shit. And I told Alex, you guys are the types to me, the city of God. What made you want to just capture this shit. Man, I would go home sometime at night and think about my day and damn, we ain't got no video of that <laughs> But in 1988, bro, this mm. was, this when I first started filming, 1988, <clears throat> I remember it was, uh, it was my birthday and Pops was hustling, Pops was getting a little paper. Mom's working, she kind of struggling. And yeah, I'm 20 years old at the time, but they pieced up and bought me a video camera, mm. VHS video camera. And that's when it started. I started filming, man. But I always knew you can't film when it's time to get down to the nitty gritty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And back then, a lot of people wasn't going to get in front of your camera. True. But over the years, it just developed to Cam Max straight. You know what I'm saying? I've I done caught some serious cases. and been locked up a lot so people understood well this ain't no police type shit you know what I mean right, right. and then when I wanted to do the history I hit up a few homies hey I, I need you to say something on camera they with it mm. so but it was just to capture my date so when, when you go home right. you can look back on your day so the, basically the whole way our whole society in gen general got more interested in capturing reality that was just a natural part of you because cameras natural. were more, and this is just your environment, so that's what you were interested in capturing. Yeah, I'm glad you put it that way. So let me go back even further because I started with me. Mm -hmm. Now, as a kid, probably, man, I might have been like five years old. Mm -hmm. My grandmother's husband, back then they had these reel-to-reels, these big old projectors and shit. He would film the family. So starting off as a kid, I wanted to do what grandpa was doing, you know what I'm saying? Um, because he had all the family people on there. And I used to be mad because I wasn't his grandchild. Mm. I'm my mama's grand, I mean my grandmother's grandchild. You lighter than everybody else? Nah, we okay. got light people in the family. But their family, which are the Bentleys, they would be on all the films. <laughs> my family, we max. I wasn't on the films. Damn. So I'd be like, damn, I want to be on there too. You know what I'm saying? So as I got older, I got the opportunity to film myself and my homeboys and my family. All right, I don't want to uh, strike any wounds, but are your parents still, you still have your parents? No, nah, both mine gone. Oh, God bless them. Did they ever get to see? Remember, cuz I told you when I was in prison, my mom died. Yeah, and I was sending condolence cards. You did, you did. I apologize. Yeah. Out because the only reason I asked at this moment was because I want to know did they ever get to see how much you got out of that first gift they gave them? They gave no, the camera. they didn't. No, no. I, you know what I believe? And I like to believe that they still might know because we, I believe that they don't know because of the Bible taught me once you're dead, you don't know nothing. Outside of that, I don't know what happens when you die. Mm -hmm. So maybe they do know. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I want to get, I want to give you that thought. Maybe when you go to sleep tonight, they might be. Like, damn, baby, we got that camera yeah, to look at him, yeah, you feel me? I like to believe sure. that might be a possibility. Yeah. And oh, if you God. look at it that way, we talking, what, 12 plus 23, 35 years <sighs> later. So yeah, that was a blessing. That's a blessing, definitely. Do you have any aspirations going outside of just raw reality to like maybe productions, acting, not you acting, but capturing things that from our environment, like Men's Society, Boys in the Hood, Color, South Central, any time for a new one? 
Yeah, no, nah, I'm tired of all this shit, man. People be wanting to involve me and stuff, but what I learned, Spider Low, you probably been knowing this because you was in the industry. A lot of people full of shit. They sell you dreams. And... 97.97%. That's man. what I learned. So, you know, that's where I'm at with it now. I done basically gave up hope. But I, where, where I want to end my little, or at least my way in the door, I, I wrote a book, 2015. I want to put that on the screen. Mm. And so a couple of people I was working with um, try to get it to be a TV program. Mm. And and I, I hate to use the word we failed, but we didn't get nowhere. The furthest we got was with CNN. Mm. And CNN That's got this. <laughs> yeah, CNN got this dude, uh, something, Bell, Camp, Kamal Bell or something like that. I'm not familiar with their lineup, the uh, production. Well, right they got here. this one black okay. dude, and he does all the, like, the ghetto shit, okay. the urban stuff. He hated on your shit? Nah, nah, okay. they just stuck Shout with him. Shout out to him then, bruh. Yeah. Oh, they stuck with him. Kamal Bell. Kamal Bell, man, it's, you know. Yeah, they stuck with him, so they didn't give us a shot. Let me but. tell you something, from my perspective, we just said, if you have sparked any type of interest in CNN, mm. at such a high level of success, that trickling down, there are so many probably comfortable levels of interest. I'm glad you mentioned that, and it kind of died out, because I think if we, if we read, visited it, there's no telling what we can exactly. accomplish. Yeah, yeah. They they said if I read, you know, change up some of the program. Uh, I forget what you call it. Uh, it's like a deck. Okay. Change that up a little bit. We had Ice T working with us. Shout out to Ice T. Shout out to Ice T on that. Ice gave me his production team, his manager, all that man. So, oh, and it still bumped into a roadblock. Yeah, yeah. Well, we ain't gonna let it stop at Ice T because we're gonna revisit it, man. Because I got some things in the works along that line that might be able to benefit um, what you're trying to do, and it's only another strike at it. We never know, cause like, it's a lot of it's a lot of motherfucking memes I see where you see somebody digging in a tunnel. And you'll see them get tired. Like I'm through. That's me. You feel me? But the shows, like if they would have just kept going on, it was. So we ain't gonna let that go to waste, man. I appreciate you coming through, Kev Mack. This is one of the episodes that probably can go on for two, three more hours. Oh, but I have reached my time limit, and I would like for you to let everybody that's watching this, listening to us, know where they can keep up with you. And I want you to promise them on spot so it won't be you promising me that you're coming back again. We need you back. Yeah, I'll come back for sure. Um, you can find me at Kev Mac Videos. That channel, that that's the main channel. We do a lot of covering the history of individual gangs. And then I have a spinoff channel, KM Video Live Streams. That's where I do all the live stuff and I tell little gang stories in between. Appreciate that, man. And uh, I'm SBI, the most East of you know where to find me. On IG, Spotty Look Most Easty, the number seven. On YouTube, is youtube.com backslash Spotty Look Most Easty. It's Facts and Fillers, the podcast. We up out of here. The life we live right now is all about the money. So, what you gonna do when you ain't got no money? Before I